So now I get to I-12, and I-12 is one of those blocks that I've been dreading because it has all these teeny tiny pieces. So occasionally I don't get to have ones that are with big pieces, I have to have all these little bitties. So I have all my pieces laid out like usual, and there's 32 of these little tiny triangles. So basting these are going to be interesting. I'll have to see what works best for basting as I go along. But assembly is going to be, I'm going to assemble all of these four triangle bits and then put these onto this flying geese unit essentially. So if you treat all these as one triangle, this rectangle right here is a flying geese unit. Then you've got your corner squares and your center squares. So really, when you break this down, it's just a row assembly. So I'm going to make these triangles, attach it to the bigger ones, and then make a row. And of course, these are going to be, it's going to be time consuming to make all four of these units. But then I'm going to make this one attach to the big one, attach to this one. Same thing here, and then I'll connect the rows and my block will be complete. So it's just gonna be a matter of basting so I can keep my tags away from each other. So I'm gonna start with these little bitties. The other thing about starting with the smalls is because then you can get them connected to each other and there's less of a chance of you losing one. So let's get to it. All right, so I've decided on my basting for my little triangles. One thing I'm noticing already is that if you don't get these really snug on each side, it's going to grow really quick. So make sure that you're going to get them straight and get them real snug without bending the corners of the triangles in. So for my white triangle background ones, I did the hypotenuse first and then each side so that my tags go down as such. And then for the focus fabric one, I did the legs first and then the hypotenuse last so that we don't have any clashing here. So I will assemble this unit here of these four and then I will attach it to this triangle. I've basted my squares as I always do, opposing sides and then opposing sides. This triangle I'm going to baste this one first and then these two so that it'll look like this one with my tags going in towards this middle square. So it's just a matter of assembling each one of these units little bits at a time. All right, for assembling each of these four triangle units, I'm gonna put the three on the bottom row together first, and then I'm gonna take the little top part and then adhere that on there. I got a piece of tape on there already, so I'm gonna stick that together because that seems to be the easiest for me. If you wanna put these two together and then put the ends on, it's fine. I'm just going to do it that way because then it's consistent and I know that I've got them all attached and things like that. So here's my first four triangle unit that I'm going to then attach to this triangle and that will form half of my flying geese unit, which is ironically right here. So I will attach this and then I will make the next unit and then attach the square to the side. Now as with all the other paper pieces, whenever you put two pieces of paper and then you have fabric between them and then you put a thread, you know, you connect them and if you want to connect them as close as possible, you're going to get some growth. So when I connect these to here, I get this growth space right here. So I'm going to do, I'm going to start at one end and go about halfway in to uh, into this triangle and I'm going to start at the other end and work my way back and then I'm going to do my little X technique when I get to this point. What I mean by that is when I get to here on the back of course I'm going to take my stitch from this point and I'm going to cross to this. Instead of doing you know, a uh, perpendicular, I'm going to do like a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to go from like here to here. And then when I start here, I'm going to cross that other thing. So this is going to make an X. What's that's going to do is it's going to pull this piece that way. 
and pull this piece that way to minimize this gap. This is the easiest, quickest way to suck up the excess that you have here because of the growth that happens when you have um, fabric between pieces of paper. So I've got both of my pieces on my flying geese unit. So this is what you should have. So there's four of these. So I got three more to make. And I'm going to attach my squares to either side and that will comprise up my whole bottom row here. So I've got my bottom row completed. I've uh, attached these two squares and if you notice this whole section is sticking up from being flat and that's because of how many pieces are in there and that will be worked into the sashing and when the papers come out it'll be even further eased but this is going to be I guess it will be this way this will be my bottom row so I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to work on the rest of my block by first putting these together like I did and then assembling the rows so I got the flying geese unit of my middle row completed and connected to my center square. So I just need to assemble this unit and this unit so I can finish these two rows. And then I will be able to connect them to the bottom. So I finished both of the flying geese units on either side of the middle. So I've attached those and that's my middle row and that will get attached to the bottom and now I just have to finish assembling my top portion so again with these units to this and I will get assembling to that one so I have my three rows all put together Got my top row and then my middle row will be that and my bottom row all ready to go so I will tape each end and work it so that I can suck up all this distance and then start from the I'll, I'll go to about probably a here I'll probably work through to this point and then start from this point and work my way over there so that way and then I'll make sure that my lines my squares line up here because I've got my stripes all lined up ready to go so I've attached my bottom row to my middle row and this is what the problem is when you've got multiple little pieces so what I did is I started at one end and instead of stopping here I actually went to here so I actually started over here so that I could make sure that this is lined up right and then I, I tied off right about here and then I came back over here, and as you can tell, it's not lined up, and I really squished it and tried to get it, and I was very aggressive with my thread, and I'm hoping that I can ease that in. Now, this line lines up, but this line doesn't, so I'm hoping when I quilt it, I can get that to line up, but I still have this one to go. So... At each one of these intersections, and I've, I do it a couple a couple stitches worth, but I come to this here, and then I will take a stitch or two and pull on it. And this is why I love this thread, because this thread puts up with me. So this is that dual duty paper piecing thread, and I will like yank on it, and then I will come over here and do this a couple times pull this as tight as I can so that I can minimize this space and I think what happened here is I just didn't get it tight enough or I had too many stitches or what but I'm not going to fix it because I think I'm going to have more problems if I do so from here I'm going to tape this and try to get this lined up best I can but once I attach this top part my block will be finished So I've now got all of my three rows together and I have now I have a I-12 completed block.